Hello everybody. So uh, my name is Aniket Kate and I guess I've seen several of your faces already. So uh, yesterday or day before yesterday, we talked about uh, blockchain privacy and then we had two interesting talks about how to work with the scalability. And today we are going to see yet another interesting uh, different approach to the whole problem of the scalability for the payment systems where we are going to study the IOU credit networks. So I'll start with something that we saw yesterday that there is a big space where lots of solutions are getting developed for blockchain uh, in the blockchain space uh, starting from the infrastructure going to the applications. And what we're going to sp uh, focus today is something which people maybe put in a something called special where these are slightly different approaches to the whole system and we are going to consider these core aspects of the blockchain and how they are different and what can we do and what are the limitations, what are the advantages of such systems. So to understand them, will, I will I like to start with the, uh, the barter system, okay? So uh, barter system is one of the, or not one of, is the oldest system of actually performing uh, interactions where the idea is that I have, let's say books and you have bananas and I want your bananas and you want my books and we find out that. Okay, books that there so many books for bananas? Yeah, so uh, let's say. <laughs> so, uh, yes, yeah, so here the idea will be then uh, you want to trade them and you find out a fair price for whatever the situation is and then you realize that okay this makes sense for both of us and then we exchange them and the barter system is a concept where basically you try to uh, exchange whatever you want. I mean we have seen very funny example if microwave and chicken water. Uh, over here, but there are, uh, I mean, this concept is still used at a small proportion or got used at a small proportion uh, over the human history, uh, but there are some inherent difficulties here that present. The, the most prominent one is the lack of double coincidence of what? What I mean by that is maybe uh, I don't want bananas or maybe I don't, uh, I realize that, hey, these bananas cannot be preserved for long duration. So what's the point let's maybe the books are costly and i should i need to get from you like thousands of bananas but they are all going to they are not uh, they are all going to get destroyed over the periods and i can't store them and stuff like that so i may say that sorry i don't want that and then in that respect that we can't do this trade okay so uh, and the finding for somebody with banana all the people who will like to actually you uh, take those may be in a difficult inherently difficult problem okay uh, then there can be issues, issues in the absence of common measure of value, maybe it's solvable in some respect where there is a uh, communication that's available. Lack of divisibility can be an issue sometime. And storing the wealth, as I mentioned, you may use banana as something for to store, but it's very difficult to store the wealth, okay? Uh, I mean, the, except for the last problem, I'll say most of the other problems I'll associate with the uh, lack of communication medium. Okay, if you hope that somewhere in the world somebody is present there to whom I can transport these and they want these bananas, maybe the problem could have got solved. But obviously in the early uh, part of human history, that was not the case. We are typically associated with the people in the same surrounding and same neighborhood. Uh, and that's the reason that uh, typically what we did is that over the period we started to deal the things uh, using some kind of money. We started to uh, do all, the, uh, all rare objects starting with the seashell to anything, we also saw those huge disks that are created in Yap Island. All these concepts started to get used as a money because the key advantage of that is that it allows you to store of value. It, you can save it and you can use it later. It's not going to get destroyed over the period, easily at least, okay? Uh, it also allows you to define everything in based uh, terms of that. So uh, communi uh, interaction in terms of the value of the systems become much better. And then that's the reason it's a much better medium of exchange rather than the uh, barter system. Okay. Uh, and this is the form of money that we know uh, now uh, where we re realize over the period that, hey, we even don't need to associate that with precious metals or whatever, right? That as long as there is one governing party or federal agency who takes care of how much money is generated and how that affects the system and as long as they take care of this properly, we don't worry about that and things will be fine at least to some extent. Okay, uh, we saw also uh, during the previous talk that uh, over the period we realized that maybe we can also instantiate this concept in a distributed 
a decentralized manner using uh, using mo more like a ledger or memory solutions such as Bitcoin and blockchain. We saw this example where we can use basically a ledger which keeps track of who owns how much at given point of time and represent that in the form of transactions where the money goes from party A to party B with a signature from party A and so on and this gets transferred to the whole network of Bitcoin and eventually the uh, this network makes sure that only correct transactions are added to a blockchain or a ledger. We know that this, uh, we have seen that this process can be helpful towards uh, gaining a similar effect as money. Okay, I'm kind of going through slightly faster over here uh, for this slide, especially because we talked in detail about what happens here in my previous lecture. So uh, as it turns out, there are just so many uh, new occurrences people come up where the core idea remains the same, but they, they wanted to do minor modifications or major modifications as well. Uh, so that they so that they want to simplify or allow more uh, more processing or use that for something different purpose and all sort of there are just lots of solutions which are present in this space. Uh, there are also things that are coming up in terms of proof of work versus proof of stake where the idea is that maybe we are wasting a lot of energy in this all uh, in this space and we want to uh, we want don't we want to make sure that that energy is not wasted or either by using that for uh, some good purpose or avoiding the use of energy uh, at our cost and that's where the aspects such as proof of work proof of stake or newer solution like Algorand that we saw uh, on the other day or, or other solutions that are coming up in this space. Uh, as already we have seen, the reason, uh, another th important thing that we are interested in is the scalability, where we saw the example that for example Visa handles on average 2000 transactions per second as we speak today. It's a scalable uh, replicated infrastructure centrally controlled while if you look at the Bitcoin network as it is, as we uh, talk about today, uh, it's restricted to around seven transactions per second. Maybe even when we try to make it faster, it will be very difficult to uh, make it beyond maybe a few tens or twenties of transactions per second looking at the current system. Okay, and then we saw example uh, by Jonathan where he was trying to actually uh, come up with solutions where we can improve the number of transactions per second to a much bigger one. Okay, what we are going to see today is another solution in this space. Okay, to uh, motivate my solution uh, towards the improving the scalability of the system, uh, let me start with something which already happening or very soon should happen with Bitcoin, and that is the payment channels. Okay, that's another way to scale the system where uh, the reason why we can only perform let's say seven or 10 transactions per second on Bitcoin as we speak today is because each of those transaction has to get approved and get added to the ledger. Okay, so you make this transaction, it has to go through, it has to be distributed to the whole system, there has to be a consensus that has to happen uh, using proof of work or any such system in such a uh, very diverse and very distributed network and eventually once it get added, it takes around 10 minutes on average and then probably uh, once you count all this inform, uh, only this part, you still know that you can only uh, send this much, you can only perform this much communication which result into maybe around seven transactions per second or speed something like that. Okay, uh, what we are trying to do with Bitcoin payment channels is that rather than say, can we make some process offline? In the sense that what happens uh, here is that you take some bitcoins, you take some currency, you lock that currency on a channel so that now it is associated with the sender and a receiver, okay? Uh, such that the sender says that over the period where, where the period is defined in this lock process, you are going to send some currency, uh, some of this uh, a bounded currency. Let's say you have 100 bitcoin, you say that. Oh, up to from zero up to 100 bitcoin some amount in between I'm going to send this receiver over the time period that is defined in the system okay and you make such a log and then you perform pay payment off chain which is just basically involves sending a small set of signatures from the sender to the receiver okay uh, and then idea is that once uh, uh, at the end of that time duration that is predefined or any time in the between, uh, the receiver may say that this is enough. I do no longer want to do business with this sender, sender, and they can just basically send some, provide a signature, and they can close this channel. 
at the end of the uh, closing of the channel, whatever transaction that has been performed, uh, get uh, okay, uh, we, uh, we approve on that so that the remaining money go back to the sender and the transaction money goes to the receiver, okay? So this is just now, I'm sure, uh, just slightly repeating again because it's a, I think this concept will be interesting for our uh, further discussion. So we are talking about such a channel between Alice and Bob and what we are going to do is that we are going to create such an open channel transaction where Alice says that, okay, I have five bitcoins. I'm going to dip, put them in a deposit such that this deposit will have an interesting condition where the idea will be uh, the deposit required signature from A and B for five dollars or after a particular time duration, which I'm showing this with this, this clock over here, Alice will get back remaining money from the system or the whole money. Okay, you send that and Bob knows about this channel, then they perform transaction. Let's say they perform transaction for up to several transactions leading up to two bitcoins, okay? And eventually they are going to they are going to decide to close the channel at that point of time Alice gets Alice still keeps his three bitcoins and Bob receives two bitcoins okay uh, that's a concept and then idea is that you for lots of small transactions that you are performing over the period you only need to perform two transactions into the larger network and that can help uh, in terms of the uh, reducing the speed because these transactions between Alice and Bob that's happening off chain, just depend upon the communication speed between Alice and Bob. If they are just close to each other or on a fast network, it can take even few milliseconds or even less than that. Okay. What's, yeah. what's the mechanism that prevents uh, uh, Alice from receiving Bob here? I mean, what's the mechanism that prefer Alice from? from how can Bob uh, accept transactions from Alice and know that she will uh, comply and, and uh, cooperate to, to close channel? Yeah. So, uh, Ooh, sorry, how, who will? Bob, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. So uh, let's say she passed two, two yeah. bitcoins. Yeah. So, and before the channel closed. Yeah. Um, so I, how does uh, how is it enforced that she will never claim that the channel that nothing happened between them and, and she will? Yeah. So uh, as I mentioned there, for each of the transactions that's happening there, she has to provide an incremental signature on that transaction. That now I should pay you one Bitcoin, now I should pay you two Bitcoin. And you can keep collecting such incremental transactions so that what Bob should do is that he should just remember the last value. That now uh, I, I'm on this particular channel, the amount that, uh, that Alice is going to pay me is two Bitcoin. And you keep that final signature and that signature helps you to finally settle the system in this particular manner. Bob publishes the final uh, proof. Yeah. And if Alice, for instance, publishes an intermediate uh, yeah. proof, then his overrides hers? No. So, yeah. So, Bob's overrides uh, because, Later? because yeah, and the thing is, as I see here, the uh, the tick I'm adding is to, it talks about the signature. So, the to close the channel, the signature has to come from Bob. Okay? So, what Bob should do is that as the time comes close to here, before, rather than waiting until this point, maybe a second uh, or maybe a one block earlier, he should close the channel with the final signature to avoid that Alice don't do anything wrong. Yeah. The denial of service on both, yeah. grant Alice back all her money. Yeah. So if at the end of this time period, if Bob is dosed so that he cannot publish this uh, thing, then Alice can play the trick. Yes. Yeah. Alice can do exactly uh, denial of service on Bob in that particular order. Uh, yeah, uh, the question is, you are right there, and uh, indeed that can happen. I don't think we can even stop this because DOS is actually like typical. It can happen, it will happen. Uh, yeah, but I like to add a, a social aspect to it that it's like here, typically you are going to perform channel because Alice and Bob know each other. So. Typically in the such social uh, relationships, the idea is that uh, there can be reputation at stake for Alice. Because assume as long as they are both happy with this transaction, maybe Alice should do that. But indeed, you're right. I think do that's why availability or the DOS problems are the most difficult in any reasonable scenario. Yes. But may, we will see. So it's already implemented in one of the coin lead coins. So maybe we'll see examples coming up in soon, uh, in a few years, how it works out. All right, so uh, the idea we can take f even further and we can say that now we can create a network of such channels. So this is called payment channel network. So what stopped me from, uh, let's say Alice has a, uh, a link to Carol for some similar thing, Carol has a link to Edward, Edward to Fabi and Bob and so on. They can, we can have such a ne whole network of such things 
and then idea is that we can perform transactions so that they start from one entity on this network and goes to some other entity which is connected through such links. Okay, for simplicity I am showing here only unidirectional channel but with more complex mechanism we can also have bidirectional channel where money can also uh, flow in both directions simultaneously. Okay, and then idea as, as I am showing you over here is the, I mean the, in the non bowl uh, like let's say non bowl numbers we are seeing the capacity of the channel that means the remaining uh, money on the channel to begin with and let's say now we are performing transaction from uh, Alice to Fabio here okay okay I probably should just stick here yeah we are performing transaction over here from Alice want to pay two dollars to uh, to bitcoins to uh, Bob via Carol Edward and Fabi and each of them associate some fees for these transactions and basically Alice will start here with three, three bitcoins and then appropriately Carol will take the uh, three of them but uh, give on the other side only 2.75 and so on we can perform so that eventually Bob receives two bitcoins. Okay? Uh, although you will say that really is this that easy, it is not easy. It's a, this payment channel network is also something which is getting developed over two years to make sense and make it in correct manner. But for our discussion, we'll just say that this is possible that we can take such different payment channels and achieve the similar effect where uh, this all this process where the Alice is paying to Bob, all these things happen in offline manner. Okay, without anything get, getting added to the uh, to the blockchain or to the network. Okay, just. Yeah. The, the reason to do that is because Alice, Alice knows Carol, and then Carol knows Edward, and then they they trust each other. Wh why would you do that and not pay directly? Yes. Perf yeah. Really good question. I mean, uh, the thing is, if they want to pay it correctly, that transaction should has to get added to the blockchain. Okay. And you have to pay the blockchain fees or whatever. Uh, and it may take at least ten minutes to confirm that transaction. Maybe and even more time to be sure that the transaction will indeed succeed. Okay, but here this is happening completely off chain in the sense that. <laughs> what I mean is, why wouldn't Alice pay Bob directly off chain as opposed to through? But then, yeah, again, the idea is that to to make such channel, let's say Alice, uh, Alice only had four Bitcoin left. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can define, def I can make different examples, but I'm okay. I forgot. So let me repeat the question. The question is regarding why not here Alice directly pays to Bob. Okay. And the answer is that if uh, Alice is already, uh, one simple example can be Alice has already locked all his coins on this channel from Alice to Carol. Okay? And now she does not have any money, but she can employ this money to perform these transactions. Uh, the bigger vision to look at is that uh, the expectation will be there will be lots of those adverse or lots of such intermediate parties who will say that make channels to us and people will take more channels to us so that then you can just make transaction through us. Okay? Because one thing to remember here is that all these parties has to be online for this transaction to be complete. Okay? Good. So uh, one thing that I want to uh, add here, so it's an interesting concept but it is restricted only for one currency at a time. You have to take money and lock that money to the system and then employ, uh, use this channel. And as you mentioned, if I lock all my money on some channel, that's it, then I can't use that money until the time uh, expires and you, can, and, uh, you can use this money, okay? So uh, that's one aspect. Another aspect is what if you want to perform cross-currency transaction? Can I somehow introduce my other currencies, my user-defined currencies, or my fiat currencies to, to the system? How can I in introduce the loans and credit that I take in the real world? Can I also represent that? And as you see, this channel is interesting, but it's inherently limited to only one currency and performing one kind of transaction. Uh, the topic of our discussion, credit networks, uh, tries to look at uh, this thing exactly in such similar path-based transaction, but uh, allowing you to have any kind of currency and any kind of network. So to make it understand, let me take an example. Let's say there is a real transaction where Bob gave Alice something which worth $100. Okay. And now Alice say that, okay, instead of paying you immediately, I can give you a note saying that I owe you $100, okay? Obviously, uh, that note will get converted to a digital signature uh, given by Alice to Bob that, okay, I owe you $100, all right? Uh, and the, the payment does not happen. 
in creating network system, what we can do this is that we can just take this such two parties, Alice and Bob, and create a link that goes from Alice to Bob, saying uh, uh, Alice owes hundred to Bob or the hundred dollar. And for simplicity, I'm not using any currency over here. Okay. Uh, let's say then Alice and Bob goes to hike uh, with Dave and Karen, where Dave is a friend of uh, Bob and Karen is a friend of Alice. And uh, they went on a hike, and uh, for some, let's say for some coffee, Dave uh, paid ten dollars to Carol, and uh, Carol uh, has to actually, in principle, has to now owes hundred, uh, or sorry, ten IOUs to Dave. But Dave and Carol probably don't know each other, and they say that okay, we are not going to see each other on the long duration. So maybe rather than just adding similar link from Carol to Dave, what they may say that hey, uh, we both are like Carol is a friend to Alice and Dave is a friend to Bob. So why don't we try to settle this system through our friends? In the sense, what I'm doing, if you say closely that I'll say that Carol says that okay, now I owe Alice ten dollars. Alice will now owe Bob one hundred and ten dollars. And Bob will owe Dave ten dollars. Okay, so value between uh, so as I'm showing here, the value between the link between Alice and Bob got changed from hundred to hundred and ten. Okay, and uh, the everything is set fair and settled over here because Alice, although na, na, more owes more to Bob, but it also on the other hand get got returned ten dollars, which eventually it should get from Karen. Okay, so it's a future settlement system. When we talk about credit network, we expect that there's a complete network of such IOUs where people just have links of these kinds, and you try to settle your transactions in the real world through uh, by performing uh, settling those through such a transaction over here. Okay, for simplicity, I'm going to take this graph where let's say we want to perform a transaction uh, where Bob basically wants to get 15 from Karen. Okay, so uh, as you can see, this problem is we need to find out the paths so that then to check if they can perform this transaction or not. Okay, and this problem co conceptually is basically max flow problem. Okay, so the idea is that you have to find out path so that that has enough credit or enough IOUs on that particular path. So here these are the two paths, and now the idea will be they will basically in combined reduce the value on these paths uh, respectively. So I'm changing this link from five to zero. And the other two, other three links get reduced by ten, okay? And that's how you try to settle in the system. It will not be always possible to settle in the network. And then option there will be either don't perform transaction or add a new link to the system, okay? Uh, the hope is that there will be link creation. Uh, initially, there is more link creation, but but once you have more, enough links in the system, you can just use those links to perform and uh, settle your transactions. So if Bob wants to pay more to Carol after this is zero, then there is a reverse link. Yeah. So uh, if Bob wants to uh, pay more to, uh, so uh, if he, so actually I, I should probably show it. Uh, so Bob wants to get these, right? He wants to pay more, then this link can increase. Uh, but let me say something in that respect. Typically, I am not showing here, but we, for simplicity, assume that all links have value uh, as a lower bound zero. And typically, users should set some upper bound for each link. That, so yeah. Can, instead of a negative link, you can just create a link in another direction. You can create, but I'll count that as a separate new link. So, so it can happen that I want to create link to you, but you don't want to create link to me. Okay, so it's not automatic to go. It's not automatic. Yeah, that's the reason I want to make sure that it's zero to some upper bound, uh, but it, the link's direction don't change immediately. Okay, but it is possible. Let's say the value is five, it can increase to that maximum value, and it can so reduce to zero. But don't go beyond zero. Okay, I'll say one can define extremely complex scenario where even the link direction can change, but it just uh, uh, makes the whole thing extremely complex. Okay. So uh, there are lots of problems however here to be solved. Okay, because now we are talking about not just in cryptocurrencies, anybody can perform transaction with anybody. But now here, things has to happen on paths. So, uh, how you find paths? Okay, as the network grow, grow uh, if it is distributed or decentralized, then the max flow may not scale well. Okay, so we may want to consider other algorithms which are maybe slight approximation, but still do better. Okay, uh, let's say there are multiple simultaneous transactions. How you select the transaction? What is your optimization function? So this problem is known as social welfare problem, that allowing maximum transaction to succeed or allowing transactions with uh, maximum value to succeed. And most of these problems are NP-hard. 
But for our discussion, we'll just consider that we take one transaction at a time and we don't worry about this optimization. We'll just do the best we can. But theoretically, these are also interesting problems that people have studied. Okay. Another thing is the liquidity of the system that we briefly looked into is that. So if we take randomly two chosen uh, pairs of node and try to uh, take a random value between them, what is the probability that we, they will have that much credit to perform a transaction for that value? Okay. Uh, obviously, if you connect everybody to everybody else uh, and have enough credit in all those links, uh, we will have really good liquidity in the system. It means you can perform transactions in the system with very high probability. But the problem is that, on the other hand, uh, like with the, in the social scenario, you don't want to create links with everybody. Okay? There can be issues in terms of the sybils or malicious nodes, and only when you know somebody well that they are going to eventually settle that link, you have trust in them of that kind, only then you are going to create the links. So there is always a trade-off between the liquidity of the system and the sybil tolerance okay? or malicious tolerance system. And uh, to explain that better, let me take an example. Why? What do you mean by tolerance, or how much? What does that all mean? Okay. So, uh, I mean, as you see here, we are uh, even in the payment channel, and here we are extending uh, the trust between two nodes uh, to a transitive trust. Okay. Such that, uh, I mean, we know that the Bob is. Uh, let's say Bob owes Pi to Carol, but eventually they are also going to use this link so that through Carol Bob may be able to perform transaction with Dave and not. So that's a transitive and uh, trust that we talk about through pair pairwise create allocation. Uh, but obviously then this can be also implied by the malicious parties to actually do uh, wrong things in the system. So uh, the key thing to remember, however, is that. Uh, it will be bounded by the amount of IOU that they have garnered or that they have got in the system. So more, for example, let's say Eve over here who is in the center, the amount of IOU that, they have, that she has got from Bob and Alice here is 10 and 20 and that defined amount of things that she can uh, do wrong to disrupt the system. Okay? Disruptions can be different kind. Most simple example can be, let's say uh, she actually used this value to show carrot to somebody that, hey, uh, I'm going to buy these things from you and I'm going to pay using these links and then don't pay. Okay? An amount of such thing that she can do is restricted by this value 30 over here. And once she does that, people can publish that uh, Eve is not paying to us and something like that. Uh, but essentially these links, uh, which are amount of IOU that Eve is getting, determines amount of things that she can do wrong. Okay? Uh, as I'm showing here, the other links where sh uh, the Eve is showing that I owe you $1,000 to Dave, that has a lesser of effect of anything wrong that can happen. Yeah. But okay. the link from Bob to Eve means that Bob owes money to Eve or Bob actually? Yeah, so somehow in some ways, uh, Eve, they are, I'll put it this way that uh, the how these links form is an interesting problem on its own. Typically, I expect there will be two mechanisms that happens or that's what even happening today. Yeah. The deduction of the link. Yeah. yeah. But because in reality, when a person owes money to others and he disappears, this creates a lot of problems. But if, but if uh, many people owe money to Eve and if it disappears, in reality, it does not cause a problem to anyone. Just so uh, that's a that's a one, but that's maybe a too naive attack for Eve. Instead, she she should use that as a credit to do wrong things in the network, right? But uh, maybe in that sense, then the example of this link can be helpful where Eve say, now say that it owes Dave more money. But at least the, uh, I'll say that that depends upon how the scenario is and how these links are formed. If Eve owes Dave mm -hmm. Bitcoin, then she disappears. Then yeah. she lost a lot of money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so the, 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 the main problem is the link to Dave. Uh, so it, based on the, I see what you're saying. I'll say that uh, in the examples, uh, so there can be scenarios where UV consider in that way. But the example that I have in mind, I want to keep the trust on the, uh, your reputation or your system is amount of money that people owes you. Okay. Uh, this inherently based on that, if disappear, then obviously Dave is the one who lose it. But then as you say, if you make bad friends, you are the one who to lose. I want to look at from the whole uh, network perspective. And with these links, uh, Eve can actually try to perform systems throughout the network. So if Eve takes the 10 credits from Bob and buys some, something from another person? Yeah. Then, then he will spend. But the idea is that maybe they don't settle. It, it just shows that, that we can use this to perform transaction. So who, who lost? If Eve 
Eve now pays 10 Bitcoin to... No, he does not. That's why he shows that he'll pay, but he does not. So let me take a few more examples that can become clear. But, uh, uh, but uh, I agree with you that based on the scenario, how these links are formed, uh, the directionality will matter. And But the key question will be only one direction matters. Yeah. So basically, uh, so that can be Eve has to pay 908 to Dave, and Alice will pay 95 to Dave, and then they will be uh, so Eve who can actually perform something evil. Okay, so your question is that uh, you can simplify this network yes, yes. immediately in the system. Uh, indeed, uh, you can do that. Uh, it depends, I mean, if you can have such steps, intermediate steps, where you try to reduce the number, number of links in the system, but that inherently uh, assumes that you are reducing the liquidity in the system. In the sense, so uh, as you use the network to settle more and more transactions, you may do that. So uh, I'm, I, I can't give an empirical example where why you we like to keep more uh, liquid in the system, but it makes more sense to have so that because your transactions maybe uh, maybe you uh, the ca this link get increased, and then it may be better to use this link as a thousand link to perform transaction between Carol and Bob or something like that. Uh, but yeah, indeed, uh, it can be also interesting thing to study if you want to just make sure that the links are reduced to their bare minimum, and you just work with them from there. Okay. Uh, this concept of credit network is not uh, new. I mean, in the uh, in the space of payment cha uh, payment uh, channels or payment networks, it's new, but uh, it has been already studied in different co contexts. In most prominent context, it's studied is the civil res res uh, resistant applications, where the idea is that the key concept that they employ is that let's say uh, amount of uh, badness that can happen in the system depends upon the number amount of IOUs that the adversary node garner. And importantly, it's independent of the number, number of civil nodes or number of malicious nodes that are present in the system. Okay, so uh, let's say in this example here, uh, on the left hand side, I'm showing here the more uh, honest part of the network. And on the other side, we have either civil or the malicious part of the network. And what we are claiming is that the uh, between the well behaved or the honest nodes and the civil node, the amount of things that, that, that can go wrong depend upon if you take the edge cut of between these two graph parts. And that edge curve define the amount of badness that can happen in the system, which is independent of the number of identities that you can create. Typically in uh, most uh, social scenario, we expect that people can stop people from making newer identities a difficult problem, okay? So that's the reason it's a very interesting approach to rather than relying on the, num rather than relying on uh, curbing the identity creation, why don't we curb the links that get created by so that people should make links only when they know each other and not otherwise and that can be helpful to stop this problem. So introducing node is much easier than drawing trust from the well behaved node and if this assumption remains in your system you can employ this concept to differentiate between the uh, or to make your solutions civil resilient in some form. Okay. So there have been uh, several works of that kind where, for example, in uh, the system Ostra, they use that to prevent spam so that each link will have some number of emails that it can send. And whenever a sender wants to send an email from to a receiver, they have to have a path with that particular value, uh, with value one present from the sender to the receiver. And after sending every email, that path value gets reduced, okay? Uh, in the bazaar, the, it's used to strengthen the marketplace where you will try to perform transaction only with the people that you have enough credit or enough trust value with. Okay, sum up, they are just trying to say that rather than having predefined set of users in your voting system or your polling system, you will assume that anybody can join, but the value or the weight of your vote depends upon uh, your value of the link from you to this one central voting authority. All right, uh, but the example that we are going to study uh, most today is Ripple, which is a, a real a real life online settlement network uh, that is in place starting 2012, and it uses the concept of credit network to basically uh, form different uh, form links, such links for different currencies between the users and use those to perform transactions. Okay, 
So the idea uh, currently the Ripper is used by several banks all over the world. I mean RBC in Canada. These are just few examples which are present. I mean even this is old. I mean there are many big players all over the world who are employing it. Uh, as you can see here, we don't have to restrict our links to one particular currency. If these are IOU links, and uh, such links you can create in any currency the way you want. Okay, and there are, for example, currencies in uh, like uh, fiat currencies for all such systems or cryptocurrencies, and we can also have links uh, in other currencies. And the idea will be we can also have user defined currencies where user defined their currencies. And the, uh, they become liquid to each other if there are players who say that, oh, I'm going to, on this particular link, I'm going to take this much currency and convert that to some other currency at this particular rate. And if this information is published on the ledger or as it is happening in Ripple, you may try to uh, perform transaction across the currency. In fact, as it turns out, that's the key, one of the key businesses where Ripple works uh, Prominently today is the cross-currency transaction where people transfer people and most importantly banks transferring money from one currency to other. Okay, as they claim uh, today, as compared to the today's uh, existing uh, standard exchange systems, uh, Ripple uh, is significantly fast because they are using a, a standard. Uh, they are uh, working in a standard B BFT kind of consensus setting, although they use very shady their own consensus, but. Uh, it's still uh, be more like a BFT like system, okay? Uh, as compared to the standard banking system, which have high fees, the fees are very tiny over here, which depend upon only the small value transaction that based on the such system, which is completely online. And again, it's publicly verifiable because they are maintaining a ledger like Bitcoin ledger. So you can indeed see as the transaction transfer from a sender to the receiver and the receiver can see that on the ledger or in blockchain and then it knows that yeah indeed that transaction has happened. Yeah? You mentioned a ledger and a BFT. Yeah. So if there's a consensus mechanism here, then why do we need trust? If there is a consensus mechanism, uh, so consensus mechanism is only, uh, rather what we always try to do is that we want to reduce the trust on such distributed things, right? So there are past part, part regarding consensus and there is part regarding trust between the users. When Alice Pay bought it directly on a, a single edge, yeah. does, does it publish it to the, to the ledger, to some ledger? In the Ripple, it, yeah. it is published to the ledger. But, uh, trust, uh, uh, some, someone? So uh, here is something, if it is a direct transaction uh, and you publish to the ledger, now you also have a proof that indeed if something goes wrong, you may be able to show that proof to some third party to prove that indeed, look, this transaction happened between Alice and Bob. But I think uh, we, uh, this will be a prominent question that we'll see again and again. So maybe later again, we can revisit this question in more detail. But yeah, it's a very relevant and important question in this space. The, the ledger shows that Alice owes Bob. Yeah. Does it mean that Alice will pay Bob? So yeah. And Bob will have to chase it and to her some. Or there can be some, uh, Bob may have multiple links to multiple people and then they may all come together, that, hey, this Bob has disappeared. Uh, but the key advantage here is that if this Bob is in between somewhere over here and he is allowing transaction through him, if he disappear, I know that he has disappeared, but I may be able to create two links and use them to perform, get transfer money uh, so that I don't, I don't no longer need to trust this Bob. I will have an example of that uh, very soon. Okay, and that's the reason Ripple uh, can uh, is significantly improving the cross currency remittance and settlements. That's the key business that is currently it's working in. I think it has application beyond, but a uh, very interesting way of doing things, especially with once we add this civil uh, resistance part. But uh, for now, at least it's working prominently the remittance business. Okay, so this is a recent study that we have done for the network. Uh, it's currently have more than uh, eighty thousand uh, active nodes. Okay, uh, the, the number of accounts are significantly better. We consider the highly active node research system. And we also try to make communities there in terms of, uh, we can define communities based on their geography, uh, where it's not that we know that this node is indeed in a country, let's say Israel. But, uh, but we, 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 have, uh, we know some prominent players in such systems, and that allows us to actually do the clustering and define the boundaries where typically we expect the nodes to present because as these links has to be trust links, so the typical hope is that you create link in such system only when you have some tangible way to reach out this other party in terms of the perspective. 
okay and this just shows from 2013 2016 uh, we looked at the, uh, the snapshot we took the snapshot in December and uh, show the growth how the things are uh, growing and the reason I added that is ripple is uh, is becoming growing significantly in Israel I mean it's all of a sudden uh, in like by the end of 2016 it's largest, it's largest uh, in terms of <laughs> uh, well I guess 12,000 is not that large, but I, it just shows that it's an interesting growth pattern that we see all across the world. And as probably several of you already know, China is, and there's lots of players in China and Japan are extremely active in all the typical, in general, the blockchain space. And here also it's clear that these are forming the two big communities in general. Uh, well, it's a mixed kind of a thing. That's what it comes in uh, there. But indeed, it's not yet... Uh, Although the company is situated in US, uh, the US market comes in terms of the mixed communities here, but it's not uh, yet that big uh, in this space. Uh, so I guess because uh, this Ripple form has uh, become a company, uh, they have they were just pushing hard everywhere they you can. And some other economies accepted that much better yeah. than others. I mean, uh, that's what the situation currently is. Okay. Uh, all right, and there's also a competing system which is basically a fork where uh, some people in Ripple in 2013 decided that no, we want to make it a, a system of our own and that system called Stellar which uses very similar concept. Uh, but they decide that rather than working uh, for big banks and big uh, 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 banks and regulatory systems, they wanted to m cater more small users and that's why they typically went for the uh, developing economies in general. And that's where they have been focusing on so far. So that just to show that there are there is the interesting uh, things that are happening in all this space. Okay, uh, but uh, I mean we've seen this uh, already in uh, discussions. But the, here is a, a nice comparison between why when we compare like currencies or money versus such IOU credit network. Okay, so if you look at money, it's a medium of exchange. Anybody can exchange. Uh, with anybody as long as the recipient, recipient party is willing to accept that uh, that form of money, okay? Uh, while in terms of IOU credit network, the, it has to be depend upon the that you have a link from the sender to the receiver and that has that particular value, okay? In money also, you can put it this way, when sender and receiver both accept the same money, you are inherently assuming that they are trusting this federal agency who is creating this money. So it's also some kind of a credit network only, but uh, let's simplify and don't uh, go into those details. So a direct transaction between any two wallets can happen where a transaction can only happen in the path uh, or the path with enough credit in the credit, uh, in the credit network like Ripple. Okay. Uh, obviously liquidity is much better if you consider the cryptocurrencies while it is restricted by the path availabilities and uh, things such uh, and similar things in the credit network. Uh, however, I'm going to make a claim and uh, I will have to probably try to prove that in the rest of the talk is that uh, there is inherently limited transaction rate which is possible in the cryptocurrencies uh, when we look at that only as a currency. I'm not including payment channels in this case. While here we can make this credit network system highly scalable by probably go offline, off chain and all we, by doing all sort of different tricks we can, uh, which are only possible because of this path-based payment scenario in credit network, we are, there is a hope for much higher scalability in such a system, okay? But obviously with some trade-offs. So uh, as we see here that indeed, uh, it's a comparison that we have to make that, uh, like if you look at the credit network, we are combining the credit and the social trust. Uh, but I'll not call this a permission or server because anybody can still join the system and create links with anybody. All right. Except for the second party should be uh, responding to such links. Okay. Uh, but as I mentioned already that there's an interesting, uh, it came up as an example that the, the, there is a uh, restricted fungibility or liquidity in such a system. What I mean by that is let me take this example. Very simp uh, assume that here the two top players are two banks. Okay, and uh, let's say we have Carol in the top. She put uh, $10 in one bank and $15 in the other bank. Okay, and obviously once you put uh, even the such bank account creation can appropriately form such links where bank tell you that, okay, you put $10 in me, so I owe you $10. Okay, 
and respectively uh, respe we have another link which goes from this bank to uh, to Carl which says that okay I owe you fifteen dollars and let's say the, these banks are not connected not even di uh, I didn't mean directly maybe through indirectly in other system okay inherently if this person Carl here want to transfer this money from one bank to other which he does not trust teacher uh, which it does no longer trust or something like that she she can't do that without actually reducing first these links getting that money in the real form and then converting in other words she can't do that just as a credit network transaction okay that i'll put as a restriction on the fungibility of the system that not each every money is equal money is only equal when you can when you have a path that goes from the uh, that 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 allows you to convert one money to another uh, one form of money to other form of money okay to convert this one form of money to other form of money, sender and receiver both will be the same party as I'm talking about here. Okay, so as I'm here, transferring this 15 or some part of this money to other form is not possible in this example. Uh, but typically we expect that the banks in, this, in the world are connected, not only they're connected, they're connected with really high value links, which allows then you convert money to any form of any form to other. And in fact, that's the case in the Ripple that this uh, core network of banks or they call, as they call their in such system called gateways is highly connected uh, with very good uh, connectivity uh, and uh, very high values uh, that, that where they allow, I mean, the, their uh, upper bounds and lower bound, uh, the difference between them are extremely high so, so that they can perform really high value transactions, okay? Uh, and as we have already seen that proof of work has issues in terms of the electricity. This is a slightly old example where mining soon will take more electricity than Denmark. While if we can define distributed network of these kinds that do not require global consensus, then we can solve this problem in some way. Okay? So it's slightly confusing because we talked about Ripple has a consensus process. But we are going to study the uh, a system that do we really need consensus for some of these transactions? Can you perform something off chain, similar to the payment channel, where we do not need to include those into the consensus process? And what are the advantages and disadvantages of that is what we are going to study. Okay, so uh, the the hope will be to avoid the use of consensus in some form or in some respect, still allowing the payments to go through. Uh, but before I do that, I have to talk about another problem, and that problem is associated with the privacy. I mean, as so I, I like solving privacy problem, so I like to solve this problem of uh, uh, credit network and the uh, and, uh, and the having privacy their issue also simultaneously. And as it turns out, we saw uh, day before yesterday that Bitcoin or such blockchains has an inherent uh, problem because privacy uh, regarding privacy because everything can be. Uh, Everything is added to the ledger, so you can actually check in those ledgers and respectively find out who is performing what kind of transaction with whom. Okay, uh, the problem just becomes bigger and aggravated here because in Bitcoin you are not restricted in terms of creating identities. You can create any number of identities and use new identity to perform a newer transaction. Okay, but here inherently you cannot just change your uh, credit from one link to other efficiently. Okay, it will it will ask for new transaction and that will be linkable. So the, the privacy problem just becomes even bigger over here. Okay, so it's possible to perf uh, link multiple transactions and identity that belong to each user and know more about what transaction they are performing. Uh, and in fact, that's what we started to do. And so um, uh, my hope will be that now use the next, uh, the last part of my talk to talk about some of these interesting things that we have worked so far and we like to work in future. Okay, so obviously the first thing that we like to do is to study this privacy problem. Uh, we also then define, uh, provide a privacy definition that what do you mean by privacy in such path network? It's different than the cryptocurrencies because it's an inherently graph problem that we are trying to solve here. And then we worked on different solutions where I'll just try to briefly touch upon one of them or maybe 1.5 of them or something like that. Okay, so, uh, the first thing that always happens in this community is that I generally work, believe in more constructive solutions. However, uh, it's not, uh, privacy is one such thing, uh, it says uh, it's, it's innocent until proven guilty. I mean, you can't just say there is a privacy attack. You have to really show the attacks to make people believe and start accepting your solutions. 
And that's the first thing that we had to do where we actually took, took the uh, ripple graph uh, up until 2015 and tried to find out can we link different transactions and different accounts belonging to different users and then de-anonymize those users. And I'll just show the example as one heuristic. Uh, where the idea is that uh, kind of simple heuristic that we use that we look at the interaction between Bitcoin and Ripple. So let's say I want to add a link uh, in the system which is a Bitcoin link uh, or in the Ripple system, okay? And there are players which say that, okay, you pay us Bitcoin in Bitcoin ledger and we'll create links to you in the Ripple ledger for respective amount of Bitcoin. For example, here, uh, Alice uh, basically had one Bitcoin and she gave that to uh, the dividend Rippler, which is one of the gateway, one of the prominent players in such system. Okay, uh, that transaction they perform on the, uh, on, the, on the Bitcoin ledger and respectively in the Ripple ledger, the link appear between dividend Rippler, Rippler and Alice and which, which says that now dividend Rippler owes one Bitcoin to Alice. Okay, uh, obviously we can take this information and look, when we have this log available, we have this other log available and we also have timestamps available. So we can try to link that, okay, this account, this Bitcoin account and this Ripple account belongs to Alice. On the other hand, this dividend Rippler account uh, in Ripple and this dividend Rippler account in Bitcoin, they belong to, uh, sorry, this account in uh, uh, Ripple and this account in Bitcoin belongs to Dividend Rippler. So we can make such cross-currency linkage between different accounts to find out uh, more about uh, such systems. I mean, let's say we only know the Ripple address for Dividend Rippler. Now we also know it's one of the Bitcoin addresses. And then we can use again all our previous knowledge to keep knowing more and more about these systems. Okay. Uh, for the time, I'll not go into the second heuristic, but we have uh, the heuristics such as, which uses the hot and cool wallet mechanism where the idea typically is that like with our in real life, we'll put most of our money in bank and only keep some, we carry only some money in our wallet. And every now and then we take money out from bank and use that for our daily purposes. We can also link such hot and cold wallets or hot and cold accounts for users using some mechanisms, but I'm not go through the details of that over here for the time purpose. And what we did then is we took uh, these two prominent heuristics and collected, uh, as of December 2015, we collected the wallets at that point of time and the number of transactions that has happened in such system. And we are able to find out uh, interesting information for the prominent players in the system. We, know, we knew that some of the prominent uh, gateways or the systems, uh, the, they, we are able to explore the, the transaction uh, volume for them, which was unknown previously. I mean, the green part shows where these wallets were public and so people can know that, hey, this is the amount of transaction they were performing for this much money and stuff. But there were other transactions that they are performing some other links other and other uh, identities that were not linked previously and we were able to find out that. We also realized that with our analysis that there are some entities which are some big players which looks like as if they are different entities, but they're actually belonging to the same owner and we are able to also link them that they're sharing the same, uh, they were able to link them together and find that they belong to the same owner. We contacted uh, several of these entities, some of them just decide to see that, oh, now it's time to go public and say that, yeah, this other account belongs to us. Uh, some didn't respond, but at least uh, I'm happy that we didn't get any threatening email saying that, why are you doing this? Uh, so that's, uh, that's until 2015, I, if you take the newer data, uh, then obviously we should find more because uh, we can come up with such similar heuristics significantly. Okay, and it's uh, the important steps while after coming with some heuristic is that it's just linkability. But as we discussed during our uh, discussion day before yesterday, uh, respectively, once you have the linkability, you can associate that with the users of by to actually denonymize them uh, because you will find somewhere where these pseudonyms get linked to their real identities in the system, okay? So for example, here, as I'm showing, the users uh, in the Ripple system, whenever they perform, they send their transaction, they communicate with some of these consensus nodes, and these nodes are actually the, some of the prominent players and the companies, and they can obviously look at what kind of transactions are coming on, from which IP address they are coming, and respectively links those to their real identities or their network identities, and then use that information to further de-anonymize more transactions that are happening from such system, okay? 
So these servers are run by players such as BitStamp, Microsoft, Ripple, and obviously is when you send your transaction uh, to such systems, uh, they can actually de-anonymize you. Okay, so this is very pr similar to the f the first uh, one of the problems that we discussed in my earlier lectures, where announcing these transactions in an anonymous manner is an important thing that we need to work on, and that's not ha that haven't been done so far yet. Okay, so then the next thing that we try to do is to actually come up with the uh, Dif start to work towards the how to make this great networks uh, like work and as at the same time we also want to make sure that they are privacy preserving so that, that these attacks are not possible in such system and the first thing that we will have to do over there is to define what do you mean by privacy here okay uh, the way we define this privacy is in terms of two things the tra value privacy or transaction value privacy and transaction receiver privacy or we can also define that as a sender privacy as well uh, so the idea here is that uh, it's a crypto uh, cryptographic definitions uh, where the thing is that we let's say let's take the value privacy as an example we'll hope we'll assume that the adversary is going to create 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 the whole network okay and then it will choose two transactions one tra between the same two players Bob and Carol but the value of the transaction will be different now you as a challenger or somebody who is running the network has to pick one of them and execute that transactions and then you give the uh, give the control back to the adversary and now uh, adversary will do again all things that it wants to do uh, and try to determine which of the two transactions got selected okay and uh, our hope is that it should not be able to differentiate between these two things uh, these two transactions that's happening and that's how we'll try to define the value privacy in general uh, respectively, we can also define sender and receiver privacy where we, what we'll do is that we'll change the uh, appropriately the receiver or the sender in the system while keeping the val uh, value privacy same. And once we have these games in place, the hope will be that uh, once we have these things in place, we can compose them, uh, compose such definitions together and as long as all of them are satisfied, we can compose them together and get any other property uh, that we want to prove for the privacy. For example, we want to compare two graphs, say that can adversary uh, believe that what with the graph that is present in the system, is it in graph A or graph B, okay? Obviously, for all these example, Ripple has no privacy because all this, they can just uh, immediately determine uh, by looking at the system, okay? Uh, so I have a, a, a concrete definition, uh, but can be, let me try to do it. I mean, it will be interesting to still see. So this is a, now we are defining this transaction value privacy that we like to define. As we know, it's a computational uh, uh, indistinguishability game. So the idea will be we have attacker and challenger, like with all crypto definitions. And uh, the idea will be then attacker will, uh, the network will be maintained by the challenger, but the attacker is the one who is sending the instruction. So it will say that, hey, add a link between these two players and the, uh, the challenger will, uh, obey and keep on doing that and send whether the transaction succeeded or not, uh, that information also goes to the attacker. And so on, the attacker will create the whole network and, uh, and then tell the, the, chal that, uh, sorry, the challenger will create the whole network. And then uh, sometime attacker says, okay, stop now and we want to go to the challenge phase. So the, there the idea will be attacker will propose two transactions. Uh, here we are talking about the value privacy. So one of them will be chosen by the challenge phase and that will be performed. Okay, let's say the second one got chosen in this example. Uh, but just to add a meaning to this definition, uh, we have to assume inherently there is something that adversary don't know in the system. Okay, so uh, our way of abstracting this unknown, uh, the things which are unknown to the adversary is this balance in transaction. Okay, we'll hope that there'll be one or more such balance in transactions which are happening and are not under adversary control and they will happen simultaneously uh, such that then uh, this balancing transactions happens and respectively the network get modified. Adversary, although we'll not know about these, uh, uh, I mean, what, what are those transactions are, but we are also telling them uh, existence of those transactions because he'll get back that there, there is one transaction perf suggested by you and some one or more other transaction which are balancing transaction that got performed. Should know whether, whether the transaction is 
right, minus 10 or minus 30 plus 20, right? These are the two options. Yes. So the question was indeed the attacker should be able to differentiate between uh, is the transaction uh, that performed uh, is of one kind or combination of some other transaction. So uh, actually it bits more involved uh, than that we'll hope that there is balancing transaction in both cases, both situations. Okay, so, so I'm just here giving an example of balancing transaction. My hope will be that it's much more complex. Uh, such that attacker cannot be always be sure. There will be situations where the balancing transactions are not good enough so that attacker knows that, ah, I know that which one got chosen because when I look at the output network as I'm doing here, but yeah. But that's the issue that if, if, if the, so, so you must make sure that the output network is the same. Or see, that's one example, but it may be that our output network is different in both scenarios. That's also possible. So I'm just giving you one example of balancing. You know, it's, there are just lots of possibilities which are there. But, but long as it hides the difference between the two yeah. transactions, you're okay. Yeah. But, but if, if the attack, so you assume that the attacker knows the, the balances, the, the final balances. Yes. So uh, the question is that what does the attacker know? So I'm hoping that after this, after this challenge phase is over, he can again run the whole thing. So the way he knows what are the balances is that he queries. The challenger tell me or try to perform this transaction for this value and query will the guy will say yes or no and based on that his his hope is to predict what was the network at the end of the challenge phase. But if the attacker knows the final balance, yeah, then he knows the net transaction. Maybe he doesn't know if it's one transaction or two balance like this, balance like that. But he knows the net amount of money. So yeah. Why why should we care if if uh, the attacker knows what the transactions exactly were, were between these states? If he knows the net transaction then he knows everything he should should they have should be of interest okay so the question is uh, why why we care about if the attacker knows the net trans the whole network before and after why we care about i so i'll say that it depends on how we define the privacy we define we want our hope was to define take individual element and try to define privacy for that and the hope is that when you compose them together then actually even this task become difficult for him to actually no, I mean, respectively we have to define, let's say we, we call that as a network privacy or graph privacy. I can define that network, but uh, eventually compose these definitions together and also get similar property of that kind. Okay. okay, but I want to define here precisely what's happening. But yeah, all nice questions. Okay, and then idea obviously, the final thing is once he queries, he can do whatever he wants to do with the network and eventually tell which of the two transactions that he has chosen got selected, okay. So uh, that's what we are doing here. He has to basically pronounce what uh, output, and then we just basically compare that. Given that, what is the probability that adverse uh, compare the probability that adversary is right versus is wrong? Okay, with the thing. So uh, now, once we have such definitions, uh, the next thing that we want is to think towards the solutions in this space, right? And one can think of a centralized setting. In fact, that's what we did in the first space where we don't go into the uh, real uh, distributed network, but in fact, we looked into the, the first core solutions and we use the oblivious RAM and oblivious algorithms along with the trusted hardware to come up with the solution. Uh, where the idea is that we, as long as there is a central party and he maintains the information, but not, we don't want to trust this central party, but instead we'll use the trusted hardware and oblivious RAM solution to uh, overcome the, uh, to remove the trust except for the DOS attacks again, uh, from this system and achieve the privacy the way we want, okay? Uh, but obviously we are not interested in centralized solution. This was just something, a stepping stone that we employed. In fact, uh, the next thing that we are interested in is that can we, def can we get the, uh, these properties in a decentralized manner, okay? So by decentralized manner, uh, for now uh, on, we'll just assume that these edges are maintained locally, okay? So that uh, I knows my I know my edges. Okay, for uh, from now onwards uh, until some point, we'll assume that there is no ledger. Everybody only remembers their edges to their friends or their neighbors. And for simplicity, I'm going to assume that these nodes are online. So when transaction is happening through me, I'll be responding to this transaction. If I'm offline, the, some other path will be chosen. Okay, or another maybe simplifying assumption we can make is that there are enough online paths available so that the transaction goes from our Alice to Bob. Okay, 
so the transaction passing through a node requires its active involvement in such system. Okay. So uh, what I mean by that is uh, when I talk about that user maintain their links. So let me just take example here for such network. So here, for example, we, we talk about this Karen uh, over here. She has to remember that there is a link from her to this other player, let's say Bob, okay, and knows the value for that link. This is a link. And for uh, current assumption, we are going to assume that every link is signed by both participants, where Bob and uh, Carol both say that you have this link, uh, Bob owes, let's say, some X Bitcoin or X dollar to Carol, okay? As you can see here, respectively, I'm also showing the local information that has to be maintained by Bob, where it has to know that oh, I have these three links and these are the values on these links. Okay, uh, one thing that we already looked into is that the local knowledge, uh, we looked into partially, but we'll try to now more generalize that, is that such, for such a uh, payment system, the local knowledge is sufficient. Uh, what I mean by that is that uh, if you look at the cryptocurrency, whenever you want to perform transaction with somebody who is not directly connected to you, uh, and you have no knowledge about them, you have to make sure that whenever they send you a transaction, you go to this whole ledger and try to find out, is that the correct money that belongs to this person? And then only you can accept it. But here, that's not the case. Uh, I, as long as I know that the guy next to me, who, to whom, who is connected to somebody next and so on, going to the receiver, uh, there's a link there and each, each of these part, take, participants take care of their own interest. I mean, I don't have to worry about as long as I know that the friend or the guy next to me is going to pay me that money that he owes me. Okay, so uh, as I'm showing here, what we, what uh, you as an individual should worry about is only your net flow. So you will take your inflow uh, and you will take your outflow. When you are not performing transaction, but you are allowing transaction to go through you, what you will say that, okay, transaction happened through me and as long as my net flow remains the same, let's say we are performing transaction of this kind, uh, from this particular user to the bank, okay, the value got reduced 10 there by five, five there and uh, five on this link, as long as the net flow remains same for me, I'm fine, right? So uh, I trust my users and the net flow remains same, so uh, I don't need to worry about what's happened in the rest of the system, as long as my net, if I'm not performing transaction, my net flow remains the same, and if I'm performing transaction, I'm willing to trust my uh, my neighbor for that particular value of transaction. I'm good, doing good. Okay, uh, that's the uh, that's the thing we uh, assume. Obviously, the problem remains to resolve there. That what if what happens when you no longer uh, when this the guy next to you decide to actually default you by the top allow not allowing your trans, trans your transaction through them and some other mean. Okay, uh, but we'll look at that slightly later. So uh, that's what I mean. And so let's say we will try to build such system in a completely de uh, decentralized manner. Uh, the next problem that we need to solve is the routing problem and max flow is a good algorithm which will give us the optimal value uh, that we know, but it's, uh, it may not scale well for really distributed network where users may go offline and then knowing the network can be difficult. So in fact, uh, what we employ in our solution is a rather well-known concept uh, in the networking called landmark routing, okay, which is also employed not only in our standard networks, or at least used, used to get employed, okay, I don't know the current existing solution, but it used to get employed in the networks as well as in the sense uh, ad hoc and the censorship uh, and the sensor networks uh, for finding the routes between the use, users by employing some uh, more very prominent nodes in the system called landmark nodes, okay. So the idea is that you will create spanning trees starting with these ne networks in both direction uh, to take the transaction, uh, to get the data and to the send the data. And uh, let's say we call this as a landmark universe. And the idea is that whenever you have any two players uh, that who wants to perform transaction, what they need to see is that uh, on which, for which two landmarks or which all landmarks are we have in common, okay? And then basically find, uh, find your position in these networks and basically perform routing such that now you can, uh, let's say in this case, this particular path from, uh, from Alice to the landmark and from landmark to Bob will be employed. And, and basically you take these paths and you stitch them together to get the enough path to perform the transaction. 
Okay? This is inherently weaker than max flow. Obviously, there are some things which you can do with max flow which will, won't work here. But uh, 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 at least our experiment on the ripple network, we realize that we are still able to cover more than 98% of the transaction through these medium because the networks are indeed have some natural landmarks in terms of those gateway nodes. Is it also weaker to attack? If, if I am able to attack a landmark, yeah. Excellent question, indeed. So uh, one of the recent work, we actually tried to study that. And we are, we are able to see that the Ripple network is not uh, robust enough against. So we are able to find out 10 prominent node through which we can actually make around uh, 20,000 nodes uh, will get disconnected. So indeed, that's a prominent thing. So who, the idea is that uh, the user should connect to more and more landmarks so that even when few goes down, they still remain connected. But that's certainly something that is necessary there. And if there is a cluster of the, yeah. uh, uh, then everything is okay, stable, which will happen in time. Yes, so if there's a cluster of... Oh, a cluster, then everything works. Uh, so you're asking for the cluster for the users or the, uh, the, or the network? The landmark. Yeah, yeah. The uh, form some sort of uh, very um, rigid cluster then we are done. Yes. yes. So. Uh, landmark already is good, uh, reasonable, but they have to improve. Uh, but some users, they, what they do is that they just get connected to one landmark. And the users should actually connect themselves to multiple landmarks to avoid that this, when this one landmark goes down, things are still fine. Okay. Yes, so uh, you do such path stitching and things work out. So uh, towards working for our solutions, we actually employ this landmark also for uh, to get the privacy, okay. The, uh, uh, what we expect is that we'll not only use these landmarks for finding the routes, okay. Obviously, this route finding and the spamming tree we are doing in privacy preserving manner, but I'm not going in detail there. It's like we have to use a, a distributed uh, BFS version and all these things. I'm um, assuming that we find path in a, some manner, okay. Uh, but we want to perform these transactions so that the intermediate parties doesn't know what's the value of the transaction, okay and so do these landmarks. So what we assume that inherent that uh, any of these landmarks are present and they are typically online. So uh, if you are willing to make an honest majority assumption on this landmark, we can employ multi-party computation problem to maybe deal with it, okay? Why we have to do multi-party computation? The inherent thing is the problem to solve in such setting is that we want to find out minimum on the link. So I take this link, which goes from my sender to the receiver, and I have to know what's the minimum value in this link. And that minimum value, which is 10 over here, if it is bigger than the value of the transaction that I need to perform, I know that I can use this link. But in this process, I can obviously send that to individual nodes, but then they will know the value. And I don't want to do that. And that's the reason what I'm, what I'm going to do is that basically uh, use these landmarks where they, the nodes send uh, their values with appropriate adding appropriate commitments and signatures to the different landmarks in a secret sh using secret sharing. And then we basically perform a uh, secret sharing based multi-party computation so that the, the, use, uh, the, uh, the sender gets that, hey, this is the minimum for that particular path. And it may, uh, you may also combine this com finding the value problem and then changing the link problem together so that even immediately the, if the transaction is possible, that happens on these links. Okay, and then once, but for simplicity, let's assume that the, you, the sender gets to know that the minimum of this is 10, which is sufficient, then they basically, they will tell each of these links to change appropriately uh, to, uh, to let their transaction happen, okay? Uh, obviously, let's say two nodes, let's say this node in, uh, let's say Bob here, and the gateway, uh, once it, their link change from, let's say, 15 to 10, they know that the transaction value for, was five, and we can't stop that in such setting, because if transition is going through me, I know this value. Yes? But how do you prevent the fact that concurrently there are certain transactions running, so you don't actually, nothing is atomic. Yeah. So you don't know actually what is the current state of each edge. Yes, so uh, excellent, excellent question. The question is that uh, how we deal with the concurrency in such setting, and I'll put it this way, that was one of the important things we spent significant time on. Uh, we have. Uh, in this solution, we went for a blocking solution, where once the link is getting used, uh, then it get blocked. But obviously, that, then there can be 
transaction where they block both each other and the hope is that then they they'll use random delays otherwise there can be there will be starvation but in some other latter work we also try to avoid uh, this blocking solution and try to get some kind of concurrency where uh, we'll try to compare transaction and we'll try to make sure that at least one of them succeed immediately but uh, how to deal with concurrency is a very very good problem in this space and in fact we I hope to prove some possibility in terms of privacy in concurrency that some things may not be possible to keep private if you want to have a uh, concurrency. If you already have some interesting thought that comes to your mind, I'll be happy to hear that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Great question. So that's what we do overall. Okay. Uh, and perform transition. I'm not going through the cryptographic details over here, but uh, it things work out using MPC in this and using appropriate channels. So. Uh, what we did here is that the uh, in this setting we do not wanted to use a, a, a ledger. We wanted the users to only keep their links locally. Uh, we employed these nodes to perform uh, these uh, landmark nodes to perform uh, to perform MPC for the efficiency purpose. But essentially, it's not necessary. If we can find out the paths, uh, we can actually try to perform transaction and to see that they go through or not. So we are not inherently limited by having these gateways and you, uh, having an honest majority assumption on that. Uh, it's possible to define networks where uh, where we'll just use the basic mechanism and try to perform that in a privacy preserving manner. But we'll know at, in the end if it is successful or not. If not, we try to perform them again. Then again, but we are yet to prove that for really large scale network, this will work out. It's a very interesting thing that we are working on. Okay, uh, but. In this example, at least because of the path-based payments and credit networks, we didn't use any blockchain uh, ledger and neither proof of work. But indeed, there can be disputes, right? As we thought about where the users must prove the link values to the judge. So uh, this this is also present in all other. Let's say I owe. Uh, uh, I mean, in in the Bitcoin system, we we assume that there is a real money that is getting transferred, but that is only valid if your judge is willing to accept Bitcoin as the correct currency or the currency. If they say that, no, this is not the currency, we can't use that to uh, resolve the dispute of some kind. Similarly here, when there are links which are present, we can prove that this is the final value of the link. Okay, we can use the timestamp and uh, basically use the Lamport stamp or something very basic timestamp bit mechanism to know that what is the final value of such node. Uh, but if it turns out that some user disappear, we probably need something which is beyond and outside the system to take care and get your money back if that is lost. And the way we try to uh, abstract out that is using a concept of judge where user can prove the links value to the judge and local life suffice to define, define indeed what are the current and uh, correct value of the judge. And then the, this disputed value is bounded by these values which are present and not the whole network uh, in general in the system. Okay. Uh, indeed, as we talked about, this is a blocking solution so far. And we here we are working on, uh, on a non-blocking solution. Uh, uh, and uh, there are interesting trade-offs that we are uh, observing over there. So what do you mean by blocking solution? So blocking solution, uh, the question is what do you mean by blocking solution? What I mean by that, let's say there are two concurrent transactions that uses same same uh, uh, let's say that use two links in two different parts of the network okay and let's say one uh, every time when you uh, try to use a link you lock that link okay such that now let's say one transaction lock one link and other transaction lock uh, other link uh, they realize that hey both uh, we can't succeed and then they have to basically uh, stop and basically uh, revert back and they got blocked in this process. Uh, so, so if you have concurrent transactions that they collide yeah. along the way, then yeah. most of them fail. So, oh. Not always, yeah. most of them. But right now, there is a possibility that both of them will fail. Yeah. Okay. There are lots of things that can happen there in terms of, it's a value, both can, if there is a sufficient credit to allow both transactions, then we, you may allow it. Okay, but okay. so the non-blocking is that they... Some of them will so should succeed, kind of thing. So uh, yeah, this is what we uh, present, but there are lots of things that we work on that. I guess uh, we also, uh, this solution does not work with Ripple. Obviously it's a decentralized solution, but we indeed come up with a newer solution which come up with Ripple, 
But however, I'll not uh, go through that. I'll use my last few minutes to talk about something more uh, interesting in this space, uh, relevant to what we have been discussing. So uh, here is an interesting comparison chart uh, as we look at the different solution that we looked at. We looked into the cryptocurrencies uh, like Bitcoin. Uh, then we looked into the Ripple, which is another network which is present. Then we looked into Silent Whisper, which is the solution that we briefly discussed now. And Lightning Networks that we uh, talked about in earlier, which works with the, any cryptocurrencies. Okay, so as you can see, cryptocurrencies are direct transaction between any two wallet. Anybody, as long as you trust the cryptocurrency system, you can perform transaction with anybody. While all the three systems inherently are based on paths, so you have to have a path with enough credit to perform the transaction. Okay, uh, in terms of the flexibility, uh, the cryptocurrencies and Lightning networks are fixed for a particular currency. While while the Ripple and cr inherently credit networks. Uh, you can perform transaction in any currency and uh, still let, let them go through. Okay, uh, if you look at the verification, okay, currently in cryptocurrencies and Ripple, they are inherently you use some kind of proof of work or some kind of global consensus mechanism to verify the transaction. While uh, Lightning Network, at least the offline part or off-chain part, and similarly Silent Whisper, things are getting verified and checked uh, locally. Uh, Moving to the future, there are still very interesting things to work out. I mean, we already talked about non-blocking solutions, uh, but there can be also things that how to deal with the offline users. When users want to go offline, but still you want them to use that intermediary or uh, in some form take care that things just don't get uh, completely messed up in the system. Uh, let's say you want to bring uh, and enforce the current depth and uh, credit limits or the rules which are present in the regulatory network and how to include that into the credit network system is necessary. I mean, for example, Ripple has been fined like huge amount, I think some millions in 2014 because the US Treasury didn't find that they are complying with their rules. And because it's a company, not just Bitcoin, which is a decentralized system, uh, they, the regulatory authorities were able to do that. So in the credit system, we have to be a bit more careful. Okay, so there are, uh, so uh, another interesting thing we talked about is this, let's say Algorand or similar proof of stake systems. You, have, you uh, associate with the proof of work uh, a wealth, right? Or the uh, amount, of, uh, amount of stake that you have in the system. But in, if you look at the credit network, how you define the stake? Anybody can create any number of things. So how you define the stakes in such system and uh, is another interesting problem to be studied here, which we are very interested in for sure. So these are just few examples that interest me, but I think there is much more that can happen as well here. Uh, finally, in the future, uh, as you saw, that there are close linkings between this and the Lightning Network, and exploring those links can be very interesting. However, the major thing where I think this will be highly interesting is the uh, interledger systems. Or what if we, uh, we are talking about different currencies or different blockchains that are present, some private, some public, and we are thinking of scenarios where we will have in very near future uh, maybe network of such blockchain networks, or as we call the internet as a network of networks, here also we'll have the network of such blockchain networks where you want to perform transaction across blockchains of different kinds. And now uh, there's already a, stand, uh, a WC3 committee that's working on such protocols. Uh, but if you look at such network, there inherently looks very similar to the credit network. So it will be very interesting to study the applications of what we have looked or what we know for the credit network for this interledger protocol. And that's also something which I'm very interested in uh, working soon. Okay, so finally, I'd like to thank all my collaborators uh, from different places who have, have been working on the different aspects of the few of the things that we saw. And obviously, I'm always looking for interesting people to work on this concept. I think uh, uh, typically people focus quite a lot on cryptocurrencies in general, but I think these great networks offer a very interesting alternative and approach to the payment channel system, which requires further attention and uh, interesting things to be done. Okay, so yeah, with that I'll let you then, thanks.